Hi, I'm here with Melinda Jennison, and we're going to talk about property investing. Thank you for joining me, Melinda. You're welcome. It's great to be here. There's a, a lot of interest in cash flow properties, and I think that with the lending environment such as it is at the moment, it's difficult to buy a blue chip Sydney property now because you need like maybe $1.3 million. Yeah. But you can still buy properties in Queensland, perhaps not Brisbane, but Queensland for two hundred or 300000 Yeah. What are the, some of the pros and cons of, of chasing those sorts of properties with that entry point that have the good yields? Yeah, look, I think the biggest thing is that people need to understand the strategy that's right for their personal circumstances. And there is a lot of push at the moment towards cash flow positive properties. And that's okay if um, you may be a low income earner and therefore, you know, you're looking to supplement your income now. Mm -hmm. But I think for some people, it's really important to understand that any additional income that you do earn now through your property por portfolio will be taxed. Um, the alternative is if you are looking at capital growth, then, you know, you're not taxed unless you actually sell. So, um, but you have the opportunity to use the equity that is building up in that property to draw on that and, and to continue to build your portfolio. So strategy is probably the number one thing that I think is important and matching the strategy to an individual investor's goals. It's a good point about the tax because even when you look at, say, the capital gains, you've got the discounts for holding onto the property and then it's just based on your, your marginal rate and that yeah. sort of thing, whereas I guess the, the cash flow adds to your income. Is a cash flow property a good thing to have as part of a, a balanced portfolio? Let's say you are very negatively geared with some growth assets. Does it have a, a place in offsetting that, do you think? I think it can, again, depending on the investor and depending on what their personal income levels are what they're looking to achieve. Uh, there's certainly um, that aspect where it does offset any potentially uh, negatively geared properties. So if you're looking for a more neutral overall portfolio position, then cash flow positive properties can have a, um, a good place in that type of portfolio setup. Just quickly too, what are some of the things to be wary of? Because I've seen uh, yields as high as 7%, which on paper, and we say, you know, you shouldn't in, in invest emotionally, you should treat it like a business. A business getting 7% in the current market sounds fantastic, but what yeah. do we need to look out for? Look, we are in an environment where interest rates are the lowest that they have been um, historically. So, you know, whilst at the moment a 7% yield may be attractive and it may contribute to a cash, uh, positive cash flow, you know, if interest rates do rise in the foreseeable future, then a lot of those properties uh, may no longer be positive cash flow if they've not had the associated capital growth to, you know, grow in the value, to, to increase the value of the property over time. So you really have to be wary of, you know, on paper if something's, you know, achieving a 7% yield right now, that may come at the compromise of long-term capital growth. And if you're looking to build wealth for the future, then you must consider, you know, the capital growth uh, potential of a property and not just focus on cash flow itself. Absolute gold nuggets there. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.